Dr. Fitz here, Theoretical Physics Chapter G, The Ideal Gas Law and Thermodynamics. In this section, we're going to review for you the ideal gas law and how to look at it in terms of the three big laws that are usually taught in the chemistry courses that you encounter in high school. I'll assume that you have forgotten your chemistry. The first is Boyle's Law, and Boyle's Law relates pressure and volume if the temperature is constant. If the temperature is constant, the product of the pressure times the volume is a constant, which means if you should increase the pressure, then the volume will shrink. Think of like a balloon, where if you squeeze the balloon down in volume, the pressure of that balloon goes up. If the temperature is constant, you get this nice relationship. In this chapter, it's important to note that temperature must be measured in the Kelvin scale. The Kelvin scale is the Celsius temperature minus 273. Celsius temperature can be remembered easily by looking at the ice point, the freezing point of water, that's zero Celsius, and the boiling point of water is 100 degrees Celsius and that helps to define the Celsius scale for us. If we should subtract 273 from the Celsius temperature, you get the Kelvin scale. And in the Kelvin scale, we don't say degrees Kelvin, we say Kelvins, although many people do put the degrees in, but technically in the metric system, you shouldn't do that. If we go to the next of the big three laws, Charles's law, this states that if the pressure is constant, then if you increase the temperature, you must increase the volume. So if you have a balloon, you start heating up the gas inside it, then that balloon will expand so that the pressure uh, doesn't change. So you, if you couldn't allow that balloon to expand, if it were confined, then you would pump up the pressure. So here we let the volume adjusts itself so that when the temperature increases, the volume will increase, keeping the pressure the same. Once again, the Kelvin scale must be used for temperature in all of these uh, sections. Next, the law of Gay-Lussac. And this law states if you have constant volume, if you increase the pressure, and temperature will go up with it. So just think of heating a gas that's confined in a box. If you heat the gas, then molecules are going to get excited and move faster, and that will increase the pressure. So this is the third law, which we can put all these laws together in a nice uh, proportion. PV over T is a constant. So at one point, the pressure, its corresponding volume, divided by its corresponding Kelvin temperature, will equal the same configuration of variables at some other pressure and a volume that goes with that scenario and temperature. The ideal gas law is written as PV is NRT or NKT depending on chemist or physicist. Chemists like to use the number of moles and then we have the ideal gas constant. PV over T is a constant because in many cases the number of moles, the number of particles in the gas do not change. So if you have a balloon, then the number of particles are, these number is a constant and therefore uh, you can have P, V over T as, as a constant. But this is the uh, more general result, which kind of makes sense if you were to add more particles into that gas, you would start pumping up the pressure if you didn't increase the volume. Uh, here's the physicist formulation of this uh, ideal gas law. They like to use the number of particles and then their constant is different. It's called the Boltzmann constant. I like this uh, equation and this, also this one too. I use them both and this helps me understand a new definition of temperature because I grew up with the Fahrenheit scale and, and now the Celsius scale is becoming more common but neither of those are the exact you know, temp ideal temperature scale that we talk about with Kelvin. So this helps me understand Kelvin because it says, look, if the volume is constant, keep the number of particles the same, number of moles, 
when you lower the temperature the pressure decreases and you could keep making it colder and colder make that pressure go down and that pressure if it should reach a zero that's the definition of your temperature rock bottom you can't go any lower because you can't have negative pressure so on the Celsius scale you can have negative degrees Celsius Fahrenheit you know negative 10 Fahrenheit below zero but in this nice scale the Kelvin you can't go negative so this is neat uh, when pressure is zero you mean rock bottom there is no lower pressure when volume is zero you mean rock bottom there's no smaller volume and when you mean Kelvin temperature you are rock bottom so that's kinda nice all three variables have that similar property if we come here to the relationship between the two uh, we can see that the physicists and chemists equations are related by the definition of the number of moles. You take the number of particles and divide by Avogadro's number, which is a large number, 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd, and when you do that, you can replace the physicist's number of particles with the number of moles times Avogadro's number, and when you do that, you can see that the chemist R is equal to Avogadro's number times the Boltzmann constant of the physicists, or the Boltzmann constant is the chemist R divided by Avogadro's number.